Alexander Solzhenitsyn is talking about the different groups of people who are being swept into the gulag and he says that at the beginning they would take one guy and then they'd figure out like what do we do with his wife what do we do with his family but pretty soon they realize well let's take the whole bunch of them let's just take the whole family no one fussed about taking the head of the family first and then working out what to do with the rest of the family on the contrary they burned out whole nests whole families from the start they watched jealousy to make sure that none of the children, 14, 10, even six years old, got away. And then he says, they all went to the last scrapings, all had to go down the same road to the same common destruction. And then Solzhenitsyn makes this point. He says, this was the first such experiment, at least in modern history. Now, as I think back, I can't think of a precedent for this at all. So I think he's right that this, this is this had never occurred before at any time. But Solzhenitsyn wants to be cautious. He goes, at least in modern history, no one has ever done this kind of snatching of whole families and taking them to a common extermination. And then he says it was subsequently repeated by Hitler with the Jews and again by Stalin with nationalities which were disloyal to him or suspected by him. Now, uh, we commonly hear in America that the Holocaust is a unique event, nothing like it had ever happened before, never again. Solzhenitsyn is saying, well, sort of. It is true that the Jews as a group, as an ethnic group, were targeted in, in a unique way by Hitler, but it's also true that something of the sort had happened before, had happened before in Russia, under Lenin, then under Stalin, then Hitler, and then Stalin again. Now, the nationalities uh, targeted by Stalin were people like the, the Kazakhs and the Uzbeks and the Ukrainians. So these are ethnic nationalities around or within Russia. And of course, they're not well known to us. They're not well known in the West and here in the United States. So people don't have a good grasp of uh, ethnic targeting in that sense. They know about it, but they don't feel it, at least not with the same keenness or intensity that uh, as the targeting of the Jews. Solzhenitsyn now talks about the communist regime, the police state, going after what they call agricultural wreckers. <laughs> agricultural wreckers. Now, who are these wreckers? They're people who are spoiling the socialist agricultural program. Now, the socialist agricultural program is a complete disaster because when people have no incentive to grow anything because the government's going to take it all away, they don't grow anything. And so the government doesn't have very much at all. But the government, instead of saying, how do we get people to grow more? They say, who are the thieves who are taking away the little produce that is here? Let's go after them because these are the people who are spoiling our wonderful socialist agricultural system. So, so says Solzhenitsyn, there was a wave of people sent to the gulag for snipping ears. Snipping ears. When I first read this, I thought, snipping ears? Somebody's going around snipping people's ears? No, ears of corn. So apparently what happened is that these peasants would grow corn in the field and they're supposed to turn it all over to the government. But the peasants are starving. They don't have enough to eat themselves. And so in the middle of the night, the, the dad or the mom or the dad or the mom sends one of the kids. They go, listen, get out there, grab some of the corn so we can at least eat a meal and then we'll turn the rest of it over to the government. So this is the crime. The crime is snipping the ears of corn instead of turning it all over to the government first and then waiting to see if any of it comes back to you. Here's Solzhenitsyn. The wave of those caught doing this was not small. It included many tens of thousands of peasants, many of them not even adults, but boys, girls, and small children whose elders had sent them at night out to snip because they had no hope of receiving anything from the collective farm for their daytime labor. And then he says, for this bitter and not very productive occupation, an extreme of poverty to which the peasants had not been driven even in serfdom. Worth pausing here. Serfdom was when you had this quasi form of slavery. The peasants were not strictly speaking slaves, but they were serfs. And that meant that they were like slaves. They lived on the land of the master 
They worked for the master. They were given a meager share of what they produced. They had to get permission to leave, to uh, get a day off, to even to marry. So the serf was not theoretically owned by the master, but just about. And Solzhenitsyn was saying, even in serfdom, when things were so bad, and ultimately, of course, in the late 19th century, the Russians abolished serfdom, Solzhenitsyn goes, these peasants were starving even worse than those guys. And so you can't really blame him for wanting to eat some of the corn that their own hands have produced. Uh, remember Lincoln, the hand that makes the corn has the right to put the corn in its own mouth. And yet if you do that here, you get what? Here we go. The courts handed out a full measure, 10 years for what ranked as an especially dangerous theft of socialist property. So for this act of theft, eating your own food, the stuff that you've produced, 10 years in the gulag. Mike Lindell has a passion to help you get the best sleep of your life. He didn't just stop with the MyPillow pillows. He also created the Giza Dream bed sheets. Now, these sheets look and feel great, which means an even better night's sleep, which is crucial for our overall health. Mike found the world's best cotton called Giza. It's ultra soft and breathable, but also extremely durable. And makes Mike's latest deal, sale of the year for a limited time, you get 50% off the Giza Dream sheets, marking prices down as low as $29.98, depending on the size. Go to MyPillow dot com and a promo code Dinesh that you'll find this great offer but also deep discounts on all the my pillow products the my pillow robes the slippers the mattress topper the towel sets and so on Debbie and I by the way with Mike on the podcast who are laughing when Mike whips out all the products and starts showing them to you wow go to mypillow.com use promo code Dinesh or you can just call 800-876-0227 the number again 800-876-0227 or go to mypillow.com make sure you use the promo code D-I-N-E-S-H Dinesh Shh.